So I'm at London Paddington Station. This is one of my favourite taxi ranks to come to. Not because of the jobs that come out of here, but just because of the sheer design of the taxi rank. So I'm going to show you exactly how this rank works, but also stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you one of the worst taxi ranks in London. Most taxi ranks in London and across the country are pretty simple. It's effectively a giant queue of taxis. You join the back, you budge up, as that next taxi moves along. But what about Paddington Station, Euston Station, or Heathrow Airport? There's more than one line there. How does that work? The ultimate objective as a driver when you join any taxi rank is to figure out which driver is in front of you. Pretty simple if you're on a normal queuing taxi rank. Take King's Cross, for example. And it's worth remembering that taxi in front. You can remember it by their badge number, the driver, the design of the taxi, or I personally just like to remember the number plate, just the last three digits of the number plate. This is important because some ranks have what's called feeder portions, and sometimes these feeder portions go around corners. So by remembering the cab that's in front of you, you can ascertain if another driver has pushed in or not. But when you join a taxi rank that's got two lines, how do you know which taxi is in front of you? But when it's a little bit quieter and there's more taxis joining ranks, you will often end up following a taxi to the rank. So that's quite easy to remember. It's the taxi that you followed onto the rank. But if you turn up to a rank, as I do in this example, and you didn't see what the last taxi was to join the rank, you don't know who's in front of you. So for the case of Paddington, it's relatively simple. All you have to do is just remember the two backmost taxis. The taxi at the back of the queue on the left and the taxi at the back of the queue on the right. At this point, we don't know which one is in front of us. And in fact, we don't know which order they created these lines. So for instance, the line on the right might have been formed first, then followed by the second line. Or as another example, the lines might have been formed alternatively. So one on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. We don't know that but it doesn't really matter so long as you remember the two backmost cabs. One of those cabs will be in front of you as it's physically impossible for a cab to get in front of those cabs. Now at Paddington Station, what's clever is that there's a U-turn. The taxis kind of unshuffle themselves. So it doesn't matter how these two lines were formed, it all kind of filters out, it's like a filter. And what the drivers then do at this point is that they just wait and look for the taxi that was in front of them. So for instance, if I joined Paddington Station and there was just one queue of taxis on the right hand side, so long as I remember the taxi at the back of that line, I can go and make a brand new line on the left hand side. And then all I have to do is just sit and wait at that filter, kind of like a give way, until the taxi that was in front of me goes past. I see their number plate, I know that they were in front of me, I then join after them. But then what happens? Well, at Paddington, because Paddington is a superb example of a perfect taxi rank in action, the taxis there go and make their own new lines, and this is when they unshuffle themselves. So you'll have a line of four taxis nearest the queue, followed by a line of five taxis afterwards. Now what this then does, it makes it incredibly simple for the passengers and the marshal that are there because these taxis are now in order. Depending on how quick the rank moves, it might get a little bit confusing as to where you go on this platform bit. But really all that matters is that you get the job after the taxi in front of you. So if you do split off and you're on the different side of the platform, ensure that the taxi that was in front of you gets their job first before you take their one on. It's a giant queue at the end of the day. We love fairness. Now at Euston Station, <laughs> now that's a completely different beast entirely. Now let's go and have a little look. Might not be obvious what's so bad about this, but if you look over my shoulder, you'll notice that it has two lanes on the feeder. There's actually two lanes where cabs can load up as well. We're gonna have a closer look, but notice how no one is using this lane here, look. It's all just going into that lane. Now, obviously, Euston actually has less space than, say, Paddington. You saw there's that big ramp that leads into Paddington. You can get lots of cabs in there. Um, and this is largely down to the fact that there's not a lot of room to exit the rank. It all gets kind of queued up here, as you can see. But I'm going to go around to the loading up point so we can have a bit of a better look there. The problem for a lot of it is these bloody railings there. So you get queues of cabs that could potentially load up, but they can't. And you might be wondering why there's no cabs on that side. Well, it'll all become obvious once I rank through it. So as you can see, plenty of people who want to get in a cab, but they can't. 
and it all just queues up here. So we've got seven cabs out on that phase of lights. Not all those cabs have passengers on because obviously if you've dropped off here and you don't want to join the rank, there's going to be cabs that have to get out without passengers. So potentially fair paying passengers, you're only going to get like four people come out of there. It's uh, pretty crazy, but I'm going to give it a go. Let's see how we get on. So at first glance, Euston looks almost the same as Paddington. There's two lanes to start with. It goes around a corner and there's two lanes either side of a platform. Seems remarkably simple. Why not the same? The issue is, is that Euston has a lot smaller space for taxis. You can get loads of taxis in at Paddington and there's a clear way for them to exit the rank. Euston is actually currently a temporary rank. Our old rank used to be downstairs and there was a lot more room there. But whilst the High Speed 2 railway is taking over a lot of the Euston station footprint, this is the temporary rank that we have at the moment. It's actually attracted a lot of negative comments and criticisms from taxi users and celebrities alike, including Jason Manford. You might have seen it in some of our previous videos where there is a huge queue of passengers desperately waiting for a taxi. And that's because we can't load up taxis quick enough to get them out of the rank. So what's the problem here? The issue is, is that when you go around the corner at Euston, there's not a chance for the taxis to unfilter themselves. It's a case of if you're in the left-hand lane of those first two lines, you remain in the left-hand lane. So left-hand lane at the feeder means you're gonna be in the left-hand lane at the passenger platform. Right-hand lane at the feeder means you're gonna stay in the right-hand lane at the platform. Now, this isn't too much of a problem if the lines were made alternatively, so left, right, left, right, because then in theory, the passengers at the platform can then load in this same order and it moves taxis off a bit quicker. The issue is, is if you create a whole entire right-hand lane followed by the left-hand lane, it then means that you can't get the taxis out quick enough. But also from the passenger and the marshal's perspective, because it's incredibly hard to work out what taxi comes next, because there wasn't a chance to unfilter the lanes. Meaning that if the entire right-hand lane was made first, followed by the left-hand lane, there is no way of gathering this because there wasn't a chance to unfilter. So Euston's bad for two reasons. Number one, there's not enough space to get rid of the loaded taxis. The traffic lights onto Euston Road only get about six or seven taxis out of there in one hit. And if there's about 10 cabs that load up all at once, you can see why there's a bit of a backlog there. And secondly, there's no chance for the filter where the taxis kind of unshuffle themselves and then reorder themselves in the correct order that's easy for a marshal or for a passenger to understand. As a driver, the same rule goes when you join Euston. You don't know which taxi might be in front of you, so it's best to remember both of the number plates of one in the left lane, one in the right lane. Because again, you don't know which one turned up before you unless you followed that taxi in. What about Heathrow Airport? Heathrow's got loads of lines. That looks super confusing. Well, if you check out my Heathrow Airport video over here, I break that down in a lot more detail. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.